Hello and welcome to Hima Reviews, where I review Hima gear. If I want to review swords, I need to have some sort of criteria. I've devised a list with three major groups of these criteria. The first one is handling, that is how good the sword feels in your hand. The second one is safety, that is how safe the sword is to practice with. And the third one is miscellaneous. A lot of people will grab a sword and they'll go, wow, this handles really nicely. But what exactly does that mean? Well, a sword does have certain statistics, just like in role-playing games like D&D which tells you how it'll handle, at least basically how it'll handle, and if you like it or not, if you, if you have any experience with swords. So let's take a look at these statistics. The first one, of course, is the length of the weapon. This can be subdivided into the length of the blade and the length of the handle. Now, this is quite subjective. Some people like really, really, really long blades, some people like really long handles, some people like them short. I find that about a 30 centimeter handle and a meter blade is the best for me. I can go with plus or minus 5 on both accounts, but more doesn't suit me. So if I had like um, a longsword with a 20 centimeter handle, I couldn't really use it well because the handle would be a bit too short for me. The next thing to know is the point of balance. Most swords have it at around, most practice swords, that is, have it at around 7 or 8 centimeters, which is great. I think the acceptable range is about between 5 and 9. If it's further down the blade, uh, it'll be very, very hard hitting. If it's further down the blade, most of the impact will go to your wrist, which is bad. So about, let's say, 5 to 9 is still okay. Also depends on the weight of the sword, of course. If you have a um, 1.8 kilogram sword, with a point of balance at 9 centimeters, that hits like a beast. The next thing is the vibrational note. We have two vibrational notes. The back vibrational note should be at the heel of the hand. You check for them by slapping the palm, so pitch slap, like that. This one should be at the heel of the hand. The second vibrational note should be at about the third of the blade, so let's check that. Yeah, about here. Another thing to take into account when you get a sword in your hand, if you want to know if it's good or not, is the forward pivot point, or the forward rotational no uh, point. Uh, now, how to check this? This, how it comes into play in sword fighting, is when you stand in a fluke and you change positions. If you have the forward pivot point at the, the point, actually, uh, then you can really easily keep the point in line, no matter into which position you go. So that's really sweet for sword fighting. Uh, you check it by taking the sword, you grab it at the cross guard, and, can you see? I think you can see. Then you move it left and right, and you'll see where it stops moving. So it should be at the point. Of course, some more cut-oriented swords had it further back. But since we mostly train uh, cut and thrust techniques, uh, the point of, uh, what did I call it again, the point of rotation should be at the point, yes? Uh, one more thing to take into account, the penultimate, is the transition between the cross guard and the, the flat of the blade. It should be such that you can smoothly make a transition between the thumb grip and the regular uh, handshake grip. Also, if you have a fetish, right? It should be such that when you take a thumb grip, your thumb should be protected by the shield. So this shield is just a little bit too short, but it's good enough. Now, the grip is a, it's a thing of personal preference, really. Some like them thin, some like them thick. <laughs> uh, but yeah, um, it's usually either covered in letter, uh, letters, yes. It's either covered in leather or in a cord. Uh, now, I had this one, leather over cord, over wood, but the leather got destroyed, so I just took a tennis grip, which is awesome for this, it was actually designed for a, um, for a purpose very similar to this, so it's no surprise really that it works really well with swords as well. I just used a little bit of hockey tape to tape it into place so that it doesn't uh, slip down. So yes, those are the most important things 
for sword handling. When talking about a safe sword, there are three things to take into consideration. The first one is the flex of the blade. I like swords that start bending between the first half uh, and the last third of the blade. That is because this makes a nicer arc. You can see that the arc starts at about here. This means that the force will be more evenly dispersed throughout the sword. And it will lose plasticity later, and it will take more of a beating because it also has more material. The, the thing is, if you have a flex in the third of the blade, it doesn't mean that the blade will be less wobbly. It just means that the blade will be more wobbly just in the third of the blade, the last third of the blade. If you have something like this, you can afford to have an overall the same amount of flex with a stiffer blade, which means more material, which will take more of a beating. So, overall, swords that bend at more at the back, but are not floppy, are the best. The second thing to take into consideration with safety is the point. As you can see here, I have a nice rolled back point, which I think is ideal. Some people like to put uh, something over uh, such a point which I don't think is necessary and when you get it into the mask it will actually stick and stop in the mask so you get the full force of the thrust into your face which hurts. <clears throat> Here we have another point which is a lot thinner as you can see. Now there are several reasons I don't like this. First it hurts more. Secondly, as I was talking in handling, it affects the weight distribution and you can't really feel the point. And thirdly, if the blade breaks, if it blade breaks, let's say, here, in a thrust, which is more likely with this one than with this one, because this one flexes mostly in the last quarter of the blade. If it breaks here, this will have a bigger surface which the jacket can stop than this. The last thing to take into the consideration is edge thickness. Now you can see here this sword has a nicely rectangular um, geometry of the blade which I think is ideal for practice swords and is why I think Federschwerter are superior to blunt long swords when it comes to training. This will hurt less and the sword can take more of a beating uh, because the, the force when taking a blow will be dispersed over a greater area because there is more material to take it at the edge. Now, the last thing that we need to take into account when buying a sword is the miscellaneous. So, how much does it cost? Does it cost effective? Do you get what you pay for? So, a good, a really, really good Federschwert might be worth a lot of money, but it is still a workhorse. Federschwert will break. Steel is not a magical substance that is unbreakable. You put fatigue on it, you put stress on it, and the more stress you put on it, it will break. It will lose plasticity at some point. Uh, the second thing is the um, aesthetics, so how the sword looks. So let's say I really like the look of this one. Some other people might not, not like the, actually the basic shape of the Federschwert as well, as well. And well, that's a valid point and I can't really say anything about it. And the third one is the fit, so how well the sword is put together. This does not really affect you much, except if the pommel is like loose. But more often, the cross guard will come loose and start to rattle like this. Can you hear? Yeah? So you can see it rattles here. This isn't really much of a problem. It's more like a pet peeve or... It's slightly annoying, but it doesn't affect the performance of the sword. Of course, this is assuming that the maker of the sword is competent, that he uses the correct steel, so you can't use a stainless steel for a long sword. It will break. You need a high carbon steel that you can bend without it taking a set. Uh, also, the heat treatment methods are uh, very important. You need to take a look at what the hardness is. Now, generally, the hardness will be at between 50 and 54 uh, Rockwell. This does not hold true for all sword metals, so don't take this as the gospel. Uh, so yeah, that's how you recognize a good sword, basically. If you have any other ideas, if you disagree with me, Please put it in the comments. If you think I forgot anything, also put it in the comments so that the other people can see. And thank you. See you next time.